great day to one and all. I am Kim J.C. Enshaw, and today I will be discussing with you licensure examination for teachers preparation for mathematics majors set one. So I hope you have your paper and pens with you, solve with me, and I hope that you will be with me along with the discussion. And let's see if you will get the items correctly. So let's begin with set one and item number one. If 3x minus 1 equals 5, what is x squared? Is it A, 4, B, 9, C, 25, or D, 36? Feel free to pause the video from time to time and resume playing it and compare if you have the same answer as I did. And I will reveal the solution now to this. And if you have 3x minus 1 equals 5, adding 1 both sides gives 3x equals 5 plus 1 or 6. Dividing both sides by 3 to get the value of x, we have x equals 6 over 3 or 2. And if x equals 2, thus the value of x squared or 2 squared or 2 times 2, we have 4. And that means letter A is the correct answer. I hope you had a great start. Let's proceed with number two. Evaluate four times the square of x minus two plus three x cubed plus one if x equals negative two. Which do you think of 38, 40, 41, and 43 is correct? So when we speak about evaluating, so we will substitute the value of x and simplify the given expression. So from here, supposing, so by with x equals negative 2, by substitution, that becomes 4 times the square of the quantity negative 2 minus 2 plus 3 times negative 2 cubed plus 1. So we just replace all x's with negative 2's. Negative 2 minus 2 will become negative 4. So I have here 4 times negative 4 squared plus 3. Negative 2 cubed means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8, plus 1. And with that, negative 4 squared is 16. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24, then plus 1 still. 4 times 16 is 64, and the negative 24 plus 1 is negative 23. And 64 now minus 23 is equal to 41. Hence, letter C is the correct answer. Number 3. Expand x minus 3 quantity squared. So which of these do you think is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? So when you square a certain number, you are actually multiplying the number to itself. Or in this case, you are taking x minus 3 as a factor two times. And that means x minus 3 times x minus 3, or you could also use the FOIL method here, or simply utilize the shortcut in squaring a binomial. But for now, I will use the FOIL method. So f, so you will you will multiply the first term. So x times x, you have x squared. X times negative 3, that, that's the O or the outer. That's negative 3x. Then we'll have inner negative 3 times x, which is negative 3x, and negative 3 times negative 3 because that's plus 9, because the product of two negative numbers is positive. From here, you could see that this negative two, this, these two 
negative 3x's could be combined into negative 6x. And the rest are just copied. Hence, the final answer here is x squared minus 6x plus 9, and that is letter D. Or you could also apply the fact that if you square a binomial, you square the first term. So x squared here, then twice the product of the first and the second term. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Negative 3x times 2 is negative 6x. Then you square the last term, negative 3 squared, that's plus 9. I hope you got it. Let's proceed to item number four. What is the simplest form of 104 over 120? Is it 8 fifteenths, 13 fifteenths, 14 fifteenths, or 14 seventeenths? What do you think? So from here, you could actually see that if we wish to simplify a certain fraction, then we have to divide the numerator and denominator with, with the GCF. So you could see that the GCF of 104 and 120 is in fact 8. You could verify that on your own. And if we divide 104 by 8, that is 13. And 120 divided by 8 is 15. Hence, the simplified form of 104 over 120 is 13 fifteenths letter B. All right. So far, so good. Number five. In the expression cube root of x, x is called what? So x is the one here inside. Is it the radix, the radical, radicand, or index of the root? What do you think is the correct answer here? Let's see. Actually, this given expression is in fact a radical expression. This entire thing is a radical. The three here, which is here, the one uh, that's uh, placed here, is in fact what you call the index of the root. So this is the indexed. This symbol here, this one, is the radical sign. And in fact, the expression under the radical sign is what you call radicand. Hence, this x here is the radicand, and that is letter C. Okay, moving on to item number six. Find the perimeter of, a, of an 8 cm by 7 cm rectangle. Is it 30, 40, 45, or 56? Uh, by the way, um, the given um, measurements here are in centimeters. So what do you think? So I believe this is a pretty straightforward problem. To get the perimeter of the rectangle, you could utilize the formula P equals 2 times the sum of the length and the width, or you could also use the formula 2L plus 2W. But for now, I will be using this formula. And your L is 8cm and your width is 7cm. So we have P equals 2 times the quantity 8cm plus 7cm. 8 plus 7 is 15. So twice of 15 cm is 30 centimeters. And if you answered A, you should be happy because you got it right. Okay, number seven. Find the difference of the product and sum of 2x minus 1 and x plus 3. So which do you think of A, B, C, or D is correct? So if you're asking for the difference of the product and the sum, 
then what we can do is you will multiply these two expressions. You will also subtract them with 2x minus 1 as the minuend and x plus 3 as the subprehend. I Sorry, you will add the 2x minus 1 and x plus 3. Then you will subtract the product with the sum. So from here, so the expression 2x minus 1 times x plus 3 represents the product. And this expression here inside the bracket, or I mean your uh, with this sim grouping symbols rather, is the sum. And you could see I subtracted this product with the sum. So employing the FOIL method in the first one here, so you could first, so 2x times x, that's 2x squared, then O outer, 2x times 3, that's plus 6x, then inner, negative 1 times x, that's negative x, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, minus you will add now this expression, these two expressions. So you will combine like terms. 2x plus x, that's 3x. Negative 1 plus 3, it's positive 2. But remember, the next thing is, for this expression here, we could actually combine the 6x and the negative x into plus 5x. That's why these four terms here simplify to 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. And because you have the minus here, so you will add um, or uh, you will add with the additive inverse. You will sub add with an additive inverse of each of this or you will distribute the negative. So we have the negative 3x, then negative of 2 will be minus 2. And combining like terms again, 5x minus 3x will become plus 2x and negative 3 minus 2 will become negative 5 and the 2x squared will be copied hence the final answer is 2x squared plus 2x minus 5 letter a okay Let's move on to item number eight. Find the quotient of 8x plus 3. Uh, I mean 8x cubed plus 1 and 2x plus 1. Is it A, B, C, or D in this case? What do you think? Bams and Sirs. So there are many ways of finding the quotient. Others use the synthetic uh, division. Others use the long division. Others utilize factoring, especially if they know that the divisor is a factor of your dividend. And that's exactly, I believe, uh, what I did. Remember that if you have a cubed plus b cubed, that is equal to a plus b, times the quantity a squared minus ab plus b squared in this case. And applying that, if you have 8x cubed plus 1, so the a cubed in this case is your 8x cubed, and this one is your b cubed. So if you take the cube root of this, that will be 2x, then the cube root of 1 will be plus 1, then you have this binomial now. Then expect that the remaining factor is a trinomial. And to arrive to such, you will square this uh, first term. So 2x quantity squared, that's 4x squared. Then multiply the first and the second term. So 2x times 1, that's 2x. But you have to reverse the sign for this one. If it's plus here, it should be minus here. And lastly, square the last term here. So 1 squared will be plus 1. So 8x cubed plus 1 equals 2x plus 1 times the quantity 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. And if you are just keen enough, dividing both sides by 2x plus 1, we have 8x cubed plus 1 all over 2x plus 1 equals 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. And this is our required 
quotient. Letter B. Number nine. Let's have this. Factor completely x cubed y minus x y cubed. So what do you think? From here, we have to remember that the basic rule or the first rule in factoring polynomials is by factoring out the greatest common monomial factor or your GCMF or in some books, the GCF. And we could see that if you have x cubed and x here, the GCF of x cubed and x is x because you have to pick the one with a smaller exponent. And consequently, the GCF of y and y cubed is y. So the GCF of the two terms is in fact xy. And what you will do next is that inside the parenthesis, okay, you have your parenthesis here, divide x cubed y divided by xy will give you x squared. Then negative xy cubed divided by xy will give you minus y squared. But we are not yet done. x squared minus y squared is a difference of two squares, which is still factorable. Hence, uh, you copy the xy here. And x squared minus y squared um, could be factored as x minus y times the quantity x plus y. Please check on how to factor um, difference of two squares. That's letter D. All right. Number 10. Which of the following is equal to the square of 3x? times the square of x cubed y to the fourth? Is it A, B, C, or D here? What do you think? So it is very important to utilize the loss of exponents in simplifying the product or in getting the product of polynomials. So from here, if you are raising a power to another power, um, or a certain expression to a certain exponent, you are, in fact, uh, especially if you are raising a product to a certain uh, integral exponent, so you raise each term. No? So we have here, if you square 3, that's 9. x squared will be x squared. So this, the square of 3x is 9x squared. And in here, remember, if you have variables, if you are raising a power to another power, you simply copy the common base and multiply their exponents. So from here, x, copy the x, then 3 times 2, that's 6. That's why x, to the, the x cubed squared is x to the 6th. y to the 4th squared is y to the 8th. And now... Remember, if we multiply expressions having the same base, we copy the common base and add their exponents. We will just copy the 9 and the y to the 8 because they are unique variables. Or I mean, they could no longer be simplified, I believe. But x squared x to the 6th could still be simplified as x to the 2 plus 6 or 8. That's why the final answer here is 9x to the 8, y to the 8, and that is letter C. I hope you got this correctly, my friends.